we're going to go from sports to art. And here's the aforementioned Sarah Kane <laughs> for Art Talk number 121. Thank you, Peter. Yes, we're taking a bit of a, a 180. We're going into art and we are going to be talking about William Powell Frith, who was a Victorian era painter. He was born in Yorkshire in 1819 and is most known for his crowded scenes of contemporary British life in the Victorian era. He began his artistic training at Sass's Academy in London, not Sassy's Academy, Sass's Academy in London before attending the Royal Academy School. He quickly gained popularity and was elected associate of the Royal Academy in 1845 and then a member in 1852. And he established his reputation with the succession of large compositions of everyday English life, some of which, some of which were even uh, purchased by Queen Victoria herself. He was also a member of the Clique, which was a group of English artists formed in the 1830s. This painting might look familiar because it was highlighted in our 40th anniversary celebration talk. A Victorian dining room is set for a birthday tea, specifically for Alice, one of Frith's daughters. The father is a portrait of the artist, and the grandmother is a portrait of Mrs. Frith Sr., who kept the Dragon Hotel in Harrogate from 1826 to 1838. Um, this piece was painted only three years after Frith was inducted into the Royal Academy, and he was only 34 years old at, at the time. Um, the main characteristic of Victorian era painters was to make their subjects look as noble and idealized as possible. And we can see here, the members of the family look polite and put together, even though there are many young children running around. Uh, these pieces were made the year that Frith was welcomed into the Royal Academy, and we get a little glimpse into the creation of his works by comparing the sketch to the final product. Uh, there's a bit more action in the sketch with some other people in the background that were taken out of the final piece. But I like this piece because it's kind of a more realistic portrayal of a model. You think about how long these art models had to pose for, and I'm sure a lot of times they would doze off. <laughs> This piece was originally an oil on board painting, similar to the other uh, works that we've looked at, but it was turned into a steel engraving illustration for the book Irish Melodies by Thomas More. Again, we have subjects painted, or in this case engraved, in a very idyllic manner and idyllic setting. And the text on the page reads, no, there's nothing half so sweet in life as love's young dream. At my window was done in Boulogne, which could have been Boulogne-sur-Mer, the coastal town along the touristic stretch, a French coast along the English Channel uh, between Calais and Normandy. And what cements Frith as a famous artist that continues to be studied is that his pieces were as artistic as they were historical. He captured the daily life of people living in the Victorian era. For example, here, these women aren't doing anything particularly interesting. They're seems like they're just weighing some fruit, but that's what makes this painting so special. Every Frith piece doesn't need to be so posed or so significant. Now onto something that is more posed. Uh, here we have portraits of Thomas Cresswick. Cresswick was a British illustrator and painter known for his landscapes. On the right, we have a self-portrait uh, that he painted when he was first accepted into the Royal Academy at age 17, which is astonishing. And then on the left, we have the portrait that Frith painted of Cresswick at age 51. So they shared a really long friendship, which is very special. Here's a self-portrait of Frith painted in 83 when he was 64 years old. And this became actually the title page of his second volume of his book called my Autobiography and Reminiscences, published in 1887. And in this volume, Frith encouraged young artists to paint themselves as he felt that there was no better practice than the reproduction of his own features. An English merrymaking 100 years ago was exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1847, a canvas measuring 44 by 73 inches. And it was among Frith's most famous pictures, and an entire chapter was devoted to it in his autobiography published 40 years later. The present painting is actually a smaller version or a replica of the Royal Academy exhibit. 
And at this time, Frith had married in 1845 and his wife gave birth to their first child in 46 in their new house. So with a family support and a newly established reputation, the 28-year-old Frith worked tirelessly at this time, painting large pictures to be exhibited and smaller paintings for immediate sale. A private view at the Royal Academy was done in 1881 and exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1883. It depicts a group of distinguished Victorians, including um, uh, visiting the Royal Academy summer exhibition in 1881, just after the death of the Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli, whose portrait is visible in the archway at the back of the room right here. Um, and it was included, his portrait was included at the request of Queen Victoria. So the portrait of Disraeli represents the former. And then the influence of the aesthetic movement, which Frith was not a fan of, represents the latter. So aesthetic dress or fashion is exemplified by some of the principal female figures to the left in green, pink, and orange. And then we have Oscar Wilde right over here, who was a main proponent of aestheticism. And he's uh, depicted standing in front of the boy in the green suit. So this piece is filled with many aristocrats of the time. And the overall theme was to contrast historical achievements with ephemeral fads. So that concludes our art talk. I hope you enjoyed learning about William Powell Frith. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Sarah. You know, he really uh, had an exquisite attention to detail and, you know, just artwork from that particular era. Just I think it's um, it's iconic almost. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think remember reading that he was a contemporary and a friend of Charles Dickens. Right. Uh, the, 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 you know, world known famous uh, author. Right. And um, there may have been some collaboration between them. We really don't know. But the poverty scenes in London, I think, were common to both of them. And, you know, Dickens is probably one of my favorite authors, as it probably is for many of our audience members, in particular, Great Expectations. That's right. And I don't know if any of you remember, both the movie and the book were just fantastic, one of the early versions of the movie. I still remember to this day that scene from the uh, breakfast uh, wedding room. I went, you know, Miss Haversham is uh, jolted at the, at the altar, but uh, she's still in her wedding wedding right. dress the day, the, the day after, and uh, that, that scene was just it's still it's just ingrained in my memory. Anyway, it's an incredible period of history and art and literature during that period of time. 